Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents What Kind of Landscapes Keep Bees Healthy? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Scientific Reports, published on December 18, 2020. Research conducted by Darren J. McNeil, Heather M. Hines, Christina M. Grosinger, and others from the Department of Entomology, Insect Biodiversity Center, Center for Pollinator Research, Huck Institutes of the Life Sciences, and the Department of Biology, both at Pennsylvania State University. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Imagine a world without apples, watermelons, and sunflowers. It doesn't sound very good, does it? Unfortunately, it could actually happen. Bees help these and many other plants grow, but they have been dying. One reason for this is that bees are suffering from more diseases. But where do these bee diseases come from? Does it have to do with our changing landscapes? To find out, we collected 890 bumblebees and screened them for three pathogens. We also looked at the types and qualities of the landscapes where we found these bees. Then we created a mathematical model to help us work out how different landscapes affect bees. We found out that landscapes with lots of food, or flowers, for bees and more nesting sites led to healthier bees. Our results highlight the need to protect natural landscapes to conserve wild bees. Introduction. Maybe you have heard that bees are really important for us humans, but do you know why? Bees are the greatest pollinators. This means they help many plants to reproduce. These pollinators are essential, not only for the health of natural ecosystems, but for growing our food as well. In fact, scientists say bees are to thank for one in every three bites that we eat. Sadly, over recent decades, bee populations have declined, but why is that? There are several possible reasons. Habitat loss. The fewer flowers there are, the less food there is. Habitat loss also means there are fewer places bees can make their nests. Insecticides. These chemicals kill all types of insects, including bees. Climate change. Rising temperatures and changes to the climate harm bee populations and pathogens, the things which cause diseases. Just like us, bees can get sick and die from different diseases. And that's not all. Too few flowers to feed off, for instance, means weaker bees with worse immune systems. Much like with us, poor nutrition increases our chances of developing various diseases. Insecticides and other factors can also mean bees are weaker and get sick more often. But how many bees suffer from diseases? and what things in the landscape have the greatest impact on their health. This is what we wanted to find out. Here's one of our bumblebees collecting pollen. Bombus impatiens is also called the common eastern bumblebee. In the top photo, you can see the abdomen of the bee with bright yellow patches of pollen as it gathers it from the inside of a flower. In the bottom photo, you can see a bee above a flower gathering pollen. Methods. We captured 890 worker bumblebees from different sites in Pennsylvania, USA. The various sites included lots of different habitat types. Here in figure one, you can see a person capturing the bumblebees. We made sure to take only a small number of bees from any particular colony so that each colony was not badly affected. To test for different pathogens, we took some RNA from the bees. We then performed quantitative polymerase chain reaction, qPCR. This allowed us to assess the concentration of the pathogens, also called the pathogen load in each bee. For the curious, we tested for three different pathogens. Deformed wing virus. This virus can cause bees to develop useless wings and live a much shorter life. Black queen cell virus. This virus attacks and kills developing queens. And Verimorpha bombi. This microscopic fungus lives inside bees and scientists think it's responsible for declining numbers in several bumblebee species. To work out what each area of land was like, we looked at some databases. 
For each site, we gathered information about the number of honeybees, what the food and nesting supply was like for the bumblebees, the types of habitat, forest, crops, shrublands, etc., the weather, and how much insecticide was used in the area. We added these data to the results about the bumblebee pathogens to create mathematical models. We use these models to predict how different landscapes impact bees' pathogen loads. Results. What factors in a landscape lead to higher pathogen load in wild bees? Or, in other words, what was it about a landscape that made our bumblebees sick? Lower food quality, especially in spring, fewer nesting sites, and more honeybees. Take a look at Figure 2 to learn more. Here in Figure 2, you can see how these three factors affected pathogen loads in wild bees. In Panel A, you can see the impact of honeybee numbers on pathogen load. In Panel B, you can see the impact of spring food resources, or flowers, on pathogen load. And in Panel C, you can see the impact of nesting site quality on pathogen load. In each panel, the line indicates the model estimates, while each dot indicate actual data collected. The shaded regions represent 95% confidence intervals. Which landscape factors lead to higher pathogen loads? Landscapes with abundant spring food resources and more nesting sites showed low pathogen loads in bumblebees. However, Bumblebees who were around lots of honeybees had high pathogen loads. Discussion. Our results show that lots of food, blossoming flowers, and nesting resources are very important for wild bee health. This is especially true in spring when new bumblebee colonies start to develop. Healthy nutrition at this stage is important for the bees to build strong immune systems. Sites with more honeybees make bumblebees sicker as well. This is because honeybees are not native and can carry diseases that infect bumblebees. Plus, honeybees tend to have higher pathogen loads because they live in larger, denser colonies managed by humans. All our results show how important it is to cultivate landscapes that are good for wild bees. Lots of flowers are vital for healthy wild bee populations because flowers provide their food. And it's not just the bees. All life forms need healthy ecosystems. Healthy ecosystems provide good food and shelter and ensure resilience against disease. Conclusion. Bees and other pollinators are vital for our planet and our own food supplies, but they are in trouble. So what can we do? Grow plants to feed bees. Wild bees emerge each spring and queens need food. Plants rich in pollen and nectar. Have a look at the Gardener's World article in the reference section to find out which flowers to grow or look up the best flowers for bees in your part of the world. Don't use chemicals in your yard or garden. And learn about wild bees in your area and spread the word about the importance of flower-rich habitats for bee conservation. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website sciencejournalforkids.org for more free science teaching resources.